This is Angmering village. It's small, or was, and has a quintessentially English vibe to it. That was its character until recently. Take a note as well that the only shop in this tiny village is a local co-op, a very small local co-op. We all know that in the UK there is a housing crisis. You would have had to have lived under a rock for the last 10 years not to know there's a housing crisis. And that's been made worse for, for younger folks, especially millennials and, the, and the, their children um, because of austerity and a lack of building and now impacted massively by the cost of living crisis and now um, regular folks being evicted from rental properties um, so that rental landlords can, can put their rents up. Um, thankfully, the government has just passed legislation to end that practice. Um, but I'm talking to you here today from Angring um, because what's happened with the housing crisis is um, the government has started rushing through a plan called Local Plans. Um, when you read about them online, they had this lovely ideology that um, a neighbourhood could build what's called a neighbourhood plan and if they collectively agree to that that neighbourhood plan um, then then that's how developers they could, developers could use those plans to take building forward building projects forward in the area um, and that's exactly what Angring did um, Angring built um, a lovely neighbourhood plan and in that neighbourhood plan they were going to build on this this brownfield site which you can see behind me. This is an old BMW garage. It's a, it was called the Chandler's Garage. It's been empty like this for about 10 years now. Um, why it hasn't been redeveloped, I can't say. But part of Angmering neighborhood plan was to redevelop this site into housing. And they had also allocated a field near a main road to here. And they'd allocated 117 new homes into, into their neighborhood plan. And they were gonna build homes in that area, which would have been um, fine, it would have been an appropriate and proportionate response to the call for extra buildings, houses, homes um, in their neighbourhood plan. A referendum was put out to the residents of Angring to um, agree to that, that neighbourhood plan. 96% of res residents agreed that this was a great plan, so they adopted it. Um, and in 2015, they, they adopted it and it was going to go ahead. Um, not long after that, their neighbourhood plan got railroaded because of government building tar targets. And instead of their excellent plan, um, they were told they weren't having 117 new homes. They were going to have 1,050 new homes. I, I don't know the exact figures and I don't know what's expected in Aran District itself. Um, but I will put links uh, to the relevant information in the uh, description um, to this video. Um, so that's housing. And I want to make it really, really clear that I'm not a NIMBY at all. Um, I was, I've been absolutely pro house building for years and years. And I have watched uh, my age group uh, struggle with trying to find housing um, since the uh, financial crisis of 2008. And I have felt very, very sorry for my generation. I, and I can see what it's like for people below me. It was only by my skin of my teeth and luck really that I got on the housing ladder at all. Um, and you know, it's, our mortgages are high, so it's actually quite hard to hold on to a property and a mortgage as well in, in the current financial climate. Um, so I'm not a NIMBY, I'm totally pro house building, but what I am not pro is what's happening here. Um, there are all sorts of clever things you could do and sustainable things to build enough housing and to do it the right way. And the ideology of the local plan was that um, the building is sustainable it's in line with the character of the neighborhoods that, that are going to get built in um, the, the terminology is excellent but what is happening here is not and it doesn't fit the description of the planning at all um, and so yeah instead of brownfield sites sites like this getting redeveloped instead there has been massive building everywhere in this village all the way up to the border of the South Downs National Park um, and I cannot see any affordable housing at all. Um, it's all really really expensive. I can't see how people my age or people wanting to raise a family or move out of their parents houses will ever afford these, um, these properties. So what we've got is runaway 
property building with extortionate cost properties, nothing affordable. I can't see a great deal of social housing at all. I'm not sure if there's any. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just awful. And I'm not entirely sure why all the houses have to have a massive footprint. Why, why are there no flats? Why is no one building flats? It's crazy. You could have protected a bit of chalk grassland, which is a very rare habitat globally. You could have protected a little bit just to build upwards and instead have some flats. It's not a single flat. It's absolutely crazy. Um, but the thing, the thing that's really affected me the most is um, the fact that the sewage dumpage is into the sea here. So the sea here, south of here, is at East Preston and Rustington. I'm a resident of Rustington. Hi, um, so this is where I live. This is the beach at Rustington. And as you can see, it's, it's absolutely glorious. And it's, an, it's really a privilege to live here. Every time you're down here, you, you know, you really think about how blessed you are to live in such a beautiful part of the world. Um, but there were days last summer and intermittently as well, where it's been pretty stinky down here and you've had to walk along with your hand over your face or pull some clothing up to cover your nose or just plain leave after a few minutes for as long as you can tolerate the smell. It's not so bad here, but further down the coast, just along at Littlehampton and Bognor, some of the discharges have been pretty awful um, and have really affected residents there. And they've talked about it a lot and it's been in the, in the media a lot. Um, so it is a big issue here and it's going to impact on the local economy because uh, some of these seaside towns, they rely on um, the beach for um, tourism economy. And, um, and, so, and a summertime economy. Um, and that will get affected when people are like, brought their kids down here and it, it stinks too much to let them play in the sea or it, you're worried about, you know, the health concerns that come along with letting your children in, in sewage. Um, and a worry is that these places will get a bad reputation over time. Um, and we know, we know that Southern Water is talking now about um, trying to build up um, and make the sewer networks better but the storm drain system isn't coping at the moment it, it has had underinvestment. there's been a lot of building that's gone on along the coast here and that was before the massive bits of building we're now seeing um, as part of the local plan um, the building is massive in, in Barnum and Bognor and as I said in Angring so we now know there's a tangible link between the new houses going up southern water and connecting them to the existing sewer network but what then happens when extra rain comes down because of climate change and all that extra sewage gets pushed into the sea and that's a genuine concern that's very real environmental destruction right on the doorstep so not only have we got building associated with the local plan where there's not really any affordable housing. I, I don't know who those houses are for and I don't know where the people are going to come from to inhabit them, but it's, it's not what I'd consider to be affordable housing. It's not sustainable building. They're encroaching on chalk grasslands. I've taken photos to demonstrate that. Um, and then of course it is going to make the sewage issue worse if Southern Water can't keep up with the huge demand on its underachieving sewer system. These are very, very real problems, um, and it's it's quite scary. I, I think we're, we're, it's a losing battle to protect the environment here, which is very sad. Um, which is why um, you know, I, I'm my name's Faye. I'm a Green Party activist in the local area, and we really need to recruit more people into what we're doing to try and minimise um, in local politics the effects of um, you know building meeting the needs of the local population but also protecting the environment so if you can help in any way use the um, links in the description to get our contact details get in touch and we can work together to try and make this better thank you